controls the space, controls the universe. Yeah, it's rich and bunly goodness. Do you remember when you lost your passion for this work? I invited another friend. I hope that's okay. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, bringing you that spice to sci-fi and pop culture analysis. And welcome to our after-school special series where guests who, you know, they don't they don't have the time to meet with us or aren't available during the regular Friday at noon live broadcast. So you know what? We'll meet them after school to talk to them that way. So you guys get to find out more information about more people. So let me bring up my co-host, Fat Steven Seagal. How are you doing? I am amazing. We just had a, a people in the future are going to realize this. We just finished an amazing <laughs> online Comic Con uh, yes. for Gem City. Uh, shout out to Amanda and the con for inviting us on, letting us do our panel with Ords, Purple Valkyrie, Stone Cold Loki, as well as yourself, myself, and Amber in spirit, because someone had to make sure the kids didn't go crazy, which is yes. all good. <laughs> Other than that, um, it, it's amazing Saturday. It's been a really weird up and down week. I'm not getting into it, but you know what? I, I feel great. I feel like there's a lot of good people in this community that are supporting each other, being themselves, mm -hmm. and the content's getting better. You know what? Shout out to everyone, because you deserve just as much shout out as we put on the people channel this is true i'm sorry for spouting a lot i'm like i'm really positive in a good mood today it's not just because uh i finished four red bulls I'm <laughs> no, I'm, kid I'm kidding i'm kidding it was three and a half no i'm no 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 but um we got a great connoisseur today and like um I, he's been blessed with a lot of uh showtime lately i was honored to be on a show last night meeting some different people from the community that we see in our chats oh cool and, I think it's going to be a great interview. If it's not, we'll just charge him the money he got off his paid sick day. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks, I am excited to meet this person because I've heard a lot, uh, heard a lot about him. So let's bring him on, a.k.a. 32 Flavors of Nick Weiser. How are you doing? I am great. How are you doing? Ah, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Weather's warmer here. And uh, I'm excited that it's like over 50 degrees. I'm not listening to this. I'm not listening to this. I know. Put but, your fingers in your ears. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a proposition for the future. And in the chat that watches this later, uh, a one for yes, a two for no. But do you think Nick Weiser has the good enough hair to be the next part of the hair to menace? Do you think he can join a culture and ords? In ah! that uh. That's a good one. Oh, I, like, I like that grunt. He's like, oh, I don't know if I want to be known for herbal essences. I'm getting the hell out of here. It's going to be fun watching the live chat while the video is premiered when they put their numbers in. <sighs> oh my gosh, that's going to be cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, th th thinking about the future. But it's yeah. a pleasure having future. you, Nick, man. You Thank seem you. very positive. Ah, you seem to absolutely. Be a, uh, a dad and a streamer and uh, someone who likes not only comic books and The Simpsons, but pizza. So that's our segue mm -hmm. to our normally first question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's connected to our to our first our first question. I'm gonna have to have Stephen uh, tasked with doing that second question. Uh -oh. But the oh, okay. first question. the fat guy who likes food to ask that one. I'm gonna go to the fridge. Or we can switch, but it won't be. I'm just kidding. Fun. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but seriously. So, dude, what are your um? Let's say, what are your favorite memories of lunchtime at school? 
Oh, man. Me and lunchtime at school? Like, I mean, I'm sure you, you see me with the long hair and the shirt. You already figure out where, where I swing at, as a high school student. I was a kid where back in the day, you brought, you still had the boom box. I literally, like, there's this one band I'm obsessed with. They're actually, they actually live in Florida. They're called Cannibal Corpse. They're in that movie Ace Ventura. They had an album they put out at the time called Kill. And I brought really? that. Home. They, yeah, they were in that movie Ace Ventura. Yeah. So, wow. I know. Yeah. And um, I when that new album at the time called Kill came out, I brought my boombox, put that album on loud blast, and walked around mm -hmm. with that thing. You know, that, I, I, I interrupt a lot of lunches that way. I I also had a lot of problems with any, there's also, there's, I was the metalhead. And mm -hmm. we we're, we we're never considered the in style, which is fine for me, because I believe in the quote of, once you don't go in style, you never worry about going out of style. So I did my own mm. thing and I started building up a, a group of other people, I guess you could say that were like me. And uh -huh. I, they're like, Oh, Hey, look, this guy, he, he, even though he's like a metal head, he, he definitely speaks a lot louder. Cause you a lot of those kids are a little bit more quiet and reserved because they don't want to deal with the jocks at the time of the boys. I mean, they're a lot more unified now, but it was a different time way back when. Yeah. And that was when they had the boys. The thing is I didn't care if I had to deal with them. I didn't care. Like I was just like, all right, hey, give me that piece of Nestle chocolate. If I had to smear it all over some jocks hair, I damn sure will. Sorry. <laughs> At least it was just damn. But yeah, it was just I, I fought tooth and nail for that. And people noticed. People definitely noticed. And I was just it, people just started flocking to me and them for you know, I had a whole group of friends that were like, Oh dude, that that was awesome. You you really just did things like that. And mm -hmm. I was just I just I marched to my own drum beat. That was all I did. I was I was loud. I was vocal. I'm still loud. I'm still vocal. And mm -hmm. I think even with becoming a dad, I've not mellowed down one bit. <laughs> uh, we here at the lunch table take no affiliation to chocolate smearing <laughs> or beating drums. We we respect all drums and how much they're hit. <laughs> But I will heavily endorse the carrying of a boombox into a cafeteria because mm -hmm. that's what's up. That is what's <laughs> up. That was exactly what was up. And I, I and I'll, I'll, I'll bid it. I, I was making a statement. I was. I, I knew who I was. I was proud of it, and mm -hmm. I, I didn't sway from the path. And here I am, still that way. Like people are like, oh, you'll, you'll mellow down, and it's just like I just became who I was even more so since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, that's we take right. note. No, <laughs> no, but that's but that's that, that's cool though, because you get some people who well, some people they need to mellow out, and some people, you know, they need to actually turn up, mm -hmm. you know, later in life. It's you know, it's all about that path that you know that you that you were meant to take. Mm -hmm. It was the wolf pack I assembled. You know, <laughs> I, I assembled a wolf pack, and before you know, we had all these other like metal heads and it was fun. And then you, and I, it wasn't like you had to be a metal head to, you know, to ride with me. I, I didn't care who you were. As long as you were cool mm -hmm. with me, we're cool. I, I had some hacky sack type of people as well. I had some people who were just like total normies, like who were just working mm -hmm. at a Dunkin' Donuts at the time. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. And then we also all had a, a love too of like, just being good human beings and of course a lot of us with heavy music and of course pizza mm -hmm. was a big one then too like that's another thing <laughs> pizza was a big thing then too once again like i have not slowed down with the pizza i probably have had pizza at least once or twice every week of my life since probably i was around 12 at least once or twice a week mm -hmm. yeah sometimes a lot more sometimes a lot more those are my rookie numbers so yeah Pizza is life. I mean, I, I I showed Fat Steven this yesterday. Like pizza. So <laughs> is it socks rolled up that look yep. like a pizza? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. If he eats too much, he's gonna turn into a ninja turtle. I I, I want to say I saw something <laughs> like that at Target not too long ago. Maybe you ago. did. I'm like. I thought it was pretty freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask you this before Steven gets to his question. What metal bands were you into? 
Okay, so metal is a very interesting niche genre. And for a lot of, I, I guess, kids, teenagers, even adults, you, you get into a certain wave of bands at first, and then some either stick with that wave, and then some decide, okay, I, I want to see what else is out there. And I was, mm -hmm. I fell under the ladder. I got into, originally I got into, um, it was funny, I originally, I got kicked out of a public school, and then I got sent to a Catholic school. And when I was in that Catholic school, I met this guy named Matt, who became a lifelong friend, and he mm -hmm. gave me a Slayer album <laughs> at Catholic oh. school. <laughs> Not to offend anyone, but he gave me a Slayer album, um, yeah. gave me a Pantera, Metallica, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a few, Hatebreed, uh, Down, which has the singer Pantera, Phil Anselmo, mixed with guys from Corrosion of Conformity, Crowbar, it was like a sludge type of group, and so I was just like, oh cool, these are these really cool bands, and like Slayer, I really took note of, because they're, they're fast, they're heavy, and unlike mm -hmm. like bands like your Metallicas and Megadeths of the world, those bands, as they got more popular, they kind of toned down their sound. Slayer stayed the course. They stuck to their guns. And even when they were not considered in style in the 90s, because that's when the grunge wave took over, Slayer, like, stayed the path. They stayed that path. And that was, mm -hmm. like, I had respect for them as individuals. And I love the music on top of it. So that was the gateway. But then, you know, you also have your upfront. I, I grew up in an era, too, where a lot of the kids were into bands like Slipknot, System of a Down as well, which I, I enjoyed those bands. Like, I, I really I really enjoyed Slipknot. I feel like from that culture of bands that wave the corns and such right now, I feel like Slipknot stood out more because they're a little bit more in line with straight metal because they were on the heavier side at yeah. the time before they mellowed down themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I like them. And then, you know... I was I became so obsessed with these albums and these bands. I I I started reading the liner notes. I'd say who was producing the album. I'm like, oh, who's that name? I look mm -hmm. it up for during the yeah. days of AOL. And then all of a sudden I would look at the thanks list. Uh -huh. And that and that's where things got really interesting because I would look at who the individual members think, but the band, who the band thinks was even better because I uh, they would always have these lists of bands that either they're affiliated with, that they toured with. Right. And I was just like, oh, who's that? Oh, who's that? And I just kind of kept looking at his band before you know it. I spent all my AOL days looking up these bands that maybe five people have heard of. And I got, like, obsessed. And before you know it, I just I dug into the rabbit hole of these lesser-known waves of bands. And then before you know it, I learned about Anthrax. I learned about Testament. I learned about Exodus, Death Angel, Overkill, Suicidal Tendencies. And that, mm -hmm. and then you're, those are the New York waves, and you got the Bay Area waves. And then all of a sudden, once again, as, as time goes on, the way the, it just kept getting heavier and heavier. Then I discovered the Florida wave. The Florida wave, like Cannibal Corpse, as I mentioned earlier, they were originally nurtured in Buffalo, but then they moved to Tampa. But uh -huh. Tampa was a, a huge breathing ground in the early 90s because you had bands like Death, Cynic, Deicide, Morbid Angel, obituary malevolent creation and there was just this and that was where it really was like that was like i was having like this whole like nerd gas i'm like oh my god these bands are so nasty oh. and heavy <laughs> I, and they all had that cookie monster vocal sound like even though they all had, they all had their own variation of it like one band yeah. sang about gore one band sang about philosophical things some bands mm -hmm. even sang about social matters like mm -hmm. every band had their own, and that really intrigued me, like the extra layer of heaviness. And I was just, I was blown away. And then before you know, I was the kid who I was getting into Cannibal Corpse and then, you know, blasting their albums at school. Mm -hmm. And people are like, what is that thing <laughs> that that guy's putting on? <laughs> you are really hyper when it comes to music. And I love seeing that. Like, I like you went full ADHD and I'm loving it. <laughs> you know it's just once again it's the irony that I, I got put in the school that i did i met a guy named matt and he's the one who who turned me on to that music and oh yeah that same year i got kicked out of that school too and then got sent back to public school no one knew what oh. to do with me anymore. <laughs> no one knew what to do with me anymore wow it, it, and it wasn't like on like a religious reason i was just I was very, I just, my energy, my, my passion, I was just, mm -hmm. I was just too much for that school. Those kids were not right. But of course I maintained that friendship with my friend Matt at the time. We're still mm -hmm. friends to this day. We're talking 1999 through 2021. And yeah, wow. in some ways he kind of shaped me as far as music goes, he shaped me. Mm hmm yeah, and yeah, and I'm still going to stay. I mean, I I keep, I'm the guy who who never stopped buying the CDs. Like I probably got around probably around two thousand CDs, maybe a one or two hundred vinyls. 
Wow. And yeah, I do. I like, I say I can name bands from Switzerland, New Zealand, Brazil, Canada, Germany, of course, mm-hmm. Sweden. Sweden has a breeding ground like there's no tomorrow. Poland has a wave. And then I can talk mm-hmm. about the individual states out of America, too. I mean, you got the Bay Area. You had the New York stuff. You had the Florida stuff. And, of course, mm-hmm. Illinois, I mean, from where I'm from, Chicago had their scene. They're, they're a little more obscure. Like, they have a scene, but it's one of those things where magazines and tabloids, yada, yada. Right, they right. just never picked up on it. But that scene is very dedicated in our area. It's just it doesn't get the same ways as mentioned. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it, metal is a very geographical, very geographical. And that's the thing that people don't know. And a lot of these bands I discovered, it's just once again, I just kept looking, kept looking, kept looking. And I just never stopped. And some bands I got to know on a personal level and, you know, mm-hmm. obsess my fanboyism. Like I, like I said, when I see that pre-order link online now, I just pre-order the album, get a shirt uh-huh. if I feel the need. Like I have a shirt for every day of the year. Like right now I'm wearing two mold. They're from Canada. Mm-hmm. So, here, let me move the mic. Yeah. So you barely can read that logo, but yeah, they're they're from Canada as well, and okay. their drummer does the singing as well, if you want to call it singing, but their drummer does it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. rare. The drummer, that's the singer. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steven. Oh, no, I just wanted to tell Nick to take a breath, and I'm going to ask a second question on a different topic. <laughs> no, have at it, man. I learned more about, about, I have one quick thing, uh, Atari Teenage Riot uh, versus Slayer Spawn. What do you think of that song? No remorse. No remorse. That. You never heard no remorse. Oh, hold on. no remorse. Oh, oh, no remorse. No remorse. Oh God, it's been a long time since I. There you go. You have something to listen to afterwards. Yeah, but, it's um, been a while, man. Besides, the, besides the boombox and the heavy metal music and the schools juggling you like a circus, um, pizza. When you pizza. guys had pizza at the at the lunch <laughs> table, or where you had it at the, at the um, I guess lunch time. Was it square or was it triangle? Oh, it was the rectangle shaped slice with the plain cheese that looked like you don't know how long it was sitting there, but I still ate it anyways just because it was pizza. <laughs> it was pizza and I just I ate it anyway. My first job was working in a pizzeria. It's a true story. I, I, I worked there as this place called Nancy's and mm-hmm. they're not as franchisey as like say Pizza Hut or Domino's, but they have mm-hmm. like five to ten locations. I Did they go Illinois bankrupt? Area. Not that I know of. As far as I know, they've moved locations to like smaller locations, the same way mm-hmm. your Pizza Huts did. Oh, and okay. I and the thing is, I actually I got fired from Nancy's. I actually got fired from them, and I lasted three months. And the reason why I got fired, get ready for this, I sucked. Mm-hmm. I really sucked. As much as I love pizza, yeah, I sucked at making it. And a lot of it, I'll admit, was my fault. But the, the, the other half where it was management's fault, they would only schedule me on Fridays and Saturdays, which were the busiest days of the week. So I, I was going to say, they're yeah, I could like never crazy learn. busy. Yeah, I can never learn to work in a, a more relaxed environment where I can mm-hmm. do things more proper. So I just, I, I continued to be worse and worse. And like, of course, the pizza was good there. The, the managers, they were absolutely like nuts. They were nuts. Like one time, well, they, I, maybe for a Giordano's, no. Giordano's. Okay, they're like a deep dish pizza type of company. I don't think I've heard of them. Okay, well, they, they got um, some locations out of Illinois. Like, they, I know that mm-hmm. they got one in Vegas, stuff like that. Okay. And they're a deep dish based company, and they're mm-hmm. moving down the street. And one time I walked into Nancy's, and there's a Giordano's pizza there. And this manager named Robin, she's like, go have a slice. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll have a slice. And then she all of a sudden I took a bite, finished the slice destroyed it like there's no tomorrow it was just like i could uh, like or for me the deep dish slice i don't go for the fork and spoon i'm not bruce wayne about it i just i'm a savage like cookie monster pick up my hand and just consume see this is what i try to tell people about pizza because i i live in the philly area so oh, nice. it's all about like the local pizza joint like it you is. have like Domino's and pizza hut and places like that that's kind of what you get if you couldn't get to the local yep. pizza place mm-hmm. and get it. So mm-hmm. I don't understand these people who eat pizza with a fork and a knife. It just, <sighs> I, I, that just, that just seems so freaking wrong to me. It is. <laughs> it's, it's straight up blasphemy. I like, yeah. I'll just say it right then. And it's blasphemy. Like I get it. Like the deep dish slices, they're a lot thicker. They're a lot more cheesier. It kind of looks like a giant, like Italian pasta dish. I get mm-hmm. that part, but bro, it's a pizza, man. 
just conceal. Exactly. Don't try to be proper about it when you're eating pizza. We're Ninja Turtles in this. Don't stand pizza. on ceremony. You just go in there and mm -hmm. you know that. Yeah, and, and eat it. I don't know. I don't you guys know. are reciting my forte for most buffets right now. This is kind of funny. <laughs> first time I feel comfortable. <laughs> It's like, hey, I can find it. It's like they're talking like I eat. All right, I can get in on this. <laughs> There's certain foods you don't need a fork and a knife for. Chicken wings, um, yes. any kind of biscuit, pizza. Sloppy Joe's. I love biscuits. Yeah, that too. You know, <laughs> where it's just like you don't ask for like a – if you ask for a fork and a knife, people will look at you like you have three heads. <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> as they should, as they should. And mm -hmm. if they continue eating at that, you keep staring at them awkwardly. Just keep staring at them awkwardly until they drop that fork and knife <laughs> and just take that slice of pizza and be a savage about it. Come on, man, commit to the slice. Love the slice. Embrace they the slice. They gave you napkins for a reason. Yeah, you know, like barbecue ribs. Nobody eats those with a fork and a knife, except maybe oh. to scrape stuff off, but no, you don't. No. No, no. Straight blasphemy. Yeah. So, no, yeah, either. I tried that Giordano slice, mm -hmm. and man, Robin, she's like, oh, what do you think? I'm like, oh, it's it's really good. And then she flipped. Like, she like, almost like, okay, this lady's bipolar, and it shows. Oh. And I was just like, she, she's like, she was screaming and swearing. She said, this company's gonna put us out of business. She felt threatened that I like that slice and that that company is going to put them out of business. And yet both companies are still there to this day. We're talking a decade and a half later. So it worked out for them, but there is no need for her to act that way. And then I got, I got canned two weeks later because, well, I just wasn't progressing under the two days a week scheme, but I didn't care because at the time I was making under minimum wage and I, I, I just didn't, I didn't feel affected. Matt, ah, whatever. That's cool. I'm glad I got fired. So, and I moved on to another pizza joint. <laughs> 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 moved on to another. I moved on to this company called Rosati's. I'm afraid you not. Know, I started delivering the pizzas. And there's, uh -huh. there's something empowering about just having that pizza. You know, you're going to be the one that brings people joy. Where you, you open the door, you see the crazy kids running wild. And they, they hear, they know pizza's there. And uh, they, it's just, it's exciting. And, there was one place I was working that was a local joint called Tufano's. And it's a mm -hmm. great local joint. They're known for how good their sauce was. They had this pizza called the Stadium Pizza. It had your traditional thin crust, but in a giant right. rectangle shape with 60 slices. It was it was a masterpiece. It was a work of art. The pieces were so huge, they needed to personalize pizza bags to work around the Stadium uh -huh. Pizza. And I remember I fit 35 stadium pizzas in my car to a football game for the high school. I couldn't believe I, yeah. I fit all 35 pizzas. You can imagine I was a sweaty mess. But, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I drove at, like, I drove with the hazards on, like, five miles uh -huh. per hour, doing the slowest turns ever because I want every slice to survive. I got a $100 tip from it. So, it was beautiful. Nice. Yeah, it was worth it. So, and even when I worked there, like, I kept eating the pizza. I remember the, my boss. Ignazio Tufano. He sounds like a mobster. Ooh. Iggy, yeah, yeah. I like I said, you hear that name? I mean, he sounds, and he is. He like that guy was tough as nails, but he treated his workers like kings and queens. Mm. Like he and like, oh my god, Ignazio. He's like, hey, you you would really like this pizza, Miki? All I was just like, yeah, I, I just I have it every week while I'm here. It's like he's like, I I'll usually you know when someone works at the place. They don't. They don't eat. <laughs> you do. You've been here for two years. I was like, yeah, man. I, I love pizza. I love that you mentioned pizza because usually, um, probably contradictory, but yeah. after I like go to gym on on Fridays, it's like I go, I'll pick up pizza and I'll finish watching uh, Friday Night Tights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While I have my pizza, that's my thing. It's like I have my pizza, then I watch Friday. You know, then I watch Friday Night Tights, and I think Odin is the one that gets pizza. Every time he's on, yes, he so they is. ask him what kind of what kind of pizza he has, mm -hmm. and it's kind it's kind of funny how often I'm like watching YouTube and eating at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you: so how did you get involved in in YouTube? That is a very interesting question. So the the the, the first seeds of it were planted as far back as half a decade ago, but it wasn't directly Ooh. linked to YouTube. Um, I was working for this guy who had a YouTube channel. The channel is called Digital Tour Bus as a music driven company. He needed reviewers for the website to grow his platform. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, look, 
I listen to metal. If you're willing to like accept doing metal shows, I would gladly do it. He's like, you know, I, I can't pay, but I can at least get you on the guest list. I'm like, I'm good enough for me. <laughs> I'll just spend my money on alcohol and merch. So it works right. out anyways. So I, and I, and like, I kept showing up and then before you know, I was posting, I had reviews like on digital tour, but they had a YouTube, they have mm-hmm. a Twitter and, AK, I well, I was doing the reviews. He was doing videos that showed inside the the band members' bus. So it, was, uh, okay. it, it worked out, and I was having fun. And now I kept doing it for a while. I was going for God, two or three three years, and he had to stop doing reviews on his web page because as his page was growing, all, all the people he was hiring for reviewers. I was mm-hmm. the only one who was consistently showing up. Only one show I was given the guest list on that I couldn't show up to. Only one out of the three years. Everyone else was just very inconsistent. And, you know, mm-hmm. and like in your business, what's growing, what's not, we got to let something go. And that was unfortunately the part that had to get let go. And mm-hmm. I understood it. I was bummed, but I didn't hold any ill will towards Josh. I got yeah. it. I got where it come from right away. So I never uh-huh. hold any ill will towards him. But I remember mm-hmm. in my head, I'm like, man, since I kind of went on and did this for this long i gotta start something on my own but then i became a dad and then dad living was happening for a few years and then a few years later like i it was yeah around last year 2020 i was just like you know what this is gonna be the year i started i actually lived up to my new year's resolution i said i'm oh, gonna really? start something and i didn't know it was gonna be directly youtube i just said uh-huh. start something up it's gonna be I'm going to start something of my own platform. I don't know what, I don't know how, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to get some going. This is the year. And at that time I was, I was probably about a year invested into YouTube. I, um, my first discovery was young Ripa. I mean, we all know young Ripa. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I got into young Ripa and I, then I I watched a, uh, like a for Canon sake podcast he did with nerd Roddick. I'm like, oh, this Nerdrotic guy sounds really cool. And then Nerdrotic said he's going to be on this thing called Friday Night Ties. Like, oh, Rip is going to be on there. I'll check that out. We'll see what's up. And all of a sudden, I just saw all these other people, you know, Geeks and Gamers, Midnight's Edge, Comics Division. Mm-hmm. And that was when the floodgates tore open for me. I realized, holy crap, there's this whole new world. It kind of reminded me of like, the underground. Like when I talk about the underground of metal, the, the non mainstream, this culture here is the non-mainstream but of pop culture so it was the metal equivalent of pop mm. culture and i'm like mm. did i really just do this twice in my own lifetime for <laughs> alternatives <laughs> yes and of course you know then i went down the well evs razor fist critical drinker and mm. I just i kept going on and that's when i decided a few months like about a month later i'm like you know what i should do a youtube channel and originally i was going to name it uh metal saves but I decided, and the reason I was going to be that name was it had a name of multiple meaning because there's a lot of gossip websites, metal-based websites. They're like the mm-hmm. CNN of websites, and they're all clickbaity. I wanted to be something different from that. And then I, but I was also a giant foodie and particularly pizza. And I'm like, uh, oh man, I got to, I, I, I don't want to just do one thing. I really want to come with the idea and then like i i remember passing passing a baskin robbins and i saw the name 31 flavors and that's hence the number 32 so i'm like i'm just gonna do one i'm gonna one up the game here with the number (laughs) and the name nick weiser came from high school because i'll just admit it high school dang back to a freshman i was a kid who knew the 21 year olds and they gave me beer and i was drinking beer (laughs) at a special point in time so mm-hmm. one of the seniors at the time when I was a freshman, he gave me the name Nick Weiser. And it just, I decided to stick with it. And it's been with me for 19 years now, that name. And wow. I knew I had the name. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to do a YouTube channel. I'm going to start this thing. This is going to be the name. And then I'm like, oh, okay, now how am I going to start? That's where it gets tricky. So, and then like, I I remember then the, the lockdowns were happening. I'm like, okay, Nick this is the time to start. If you don't start now, you're never going to get this started. Remove any excuse you have in the book and just do something. It doesn't matter where, just start somewhere. You don't have to be good. You're probably going to be terrible at first, but just <laughs> just get it out of your system. Be terrible now so you can be better later. So I went to this Korean-based fast food joint called Jollibee. Their locations are mainly in like California, Nevada particularly, but they mm-hmm. added 
specific spots in two locations in Illinois. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to Jollibee. I'm going to do a video. And I ended up doing a two-parter video in my car. I did a whole the whole car thing. And that's just where I went from there. And mm -hmm. I, I was I was having fun talking about foods. I even did a video called Getting Laid with Lay's, where I review three new flavors at the time of Lay's chips, our like, you know, limited edition brand. Uh -huh. And yeah, I before I know, I was having fun with the food videos. And I was getting really satisfactory. But I'm like, oh man, I'm really I'm neglecting like the the pop culture stuff. And of course I start having my my rants on pop culture. So I start coming out mm -hmm. more and more about that. And then I was like, I, I, I got to start doing the metal stuff that I've been wanting to. So I'm, I'm like, a, and then of course, pizza is like a dominant thing. And so now I've like, I managed to do each thing kind of in waves and I've mm -hmm. figured out my groove then. And for I know it, I became a nerdrotic member and then I met a lot of the other people on the member streams. And I, mm -hmm. I remember I met Jake D. I remember I met Jake D and I'm like, hey, if anyone's looking for someone to be on a stream, I've never done live, but I'm looking mm -hmm. at just put my voice out there out there and Jake put me on and then Clobbering Times put me on. And Clobber like, Times, yeah. Yeah, my guy. And now we've now we've been buddies since. And then um Latino Slant is like, hey, do you like the X Files? I'm like, oh dude, he's a love Holly, yeah. Yeah. So he's like, hey, why don't you come on for the X Files? And I, I was originally a guest and then like, mm -hmm. you know, I kept showing up. And then he's like, hey dude, you wanna be a co-host? We could also have it on your channel to prop up your channel too. I'm like yeah, let's do this, man. And nice. it just started happening. And for you know it, like I was I was struggling at 50, and then I was mm -hmm. at 130, and now struggling at 130. And then the whole comics division yelling at park cars happened. I was at 130, and then I'm now I'm nearing 280 since then. And I've been yelling for a few months now. Yeah, it's just <laughs> been going so on and so forth, and just trying to really get my voice out, out there while also helping out anyone else I can. So I'm trying to bring mm -hmm. the favor back and to anyone I can as well. Yeah, it's all full wow. circle now. Yeah, right. Yeah, that is like that's that's awesome. Go go ahead, Stephen. I was gonna say, bro, you have so much energy. How do I get a blood transfusion? Like, seriously, <laughs> that's funny you say that, and that is. I think we're once again the metal. I truly knew I was obsessed with metal because, like, as I was getting older around the early to mid 20s, a lot of my friends at the time, they're kind of like slowing down with their lives, which I that's fine. People sometimes people get married, some have kids, some get a more serious job. I get that. And I needed, I was just like, man, I have no people to go to these shows. So I just, I got to a point where I was living in the suburbs. I'm like, no, screw it. I'm going to head to Chicago by mm -hmm. myself. I'm just going to go to these shows. I'm going to go out there and make new friends myself. And before you know it, I established a whole base in Chicago. And then I had my Chicago wow. friends. I had all like Chicago guys in the scene. Like, oh, I see you at every show. And that is funny because I would see them at every show. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I see you at every show. So I got mm -hmm. to know some of them. And then before you know it, I was that guy who's traveling with them halfway across the country to metal festivals. Like, I was, I, before you know it, I was in halfway across the country in Baltimore. With these guys mm -hmm. who I met at shows, like getting drunk and enjoying metal for five days straight live, yeah, it, it's and I'm and I've lucky I've maintained those friendships since being a dad, but mm -hmm. it's it's fun to like have that maintain that energy, and it's just funny. I was just like, you know, everyone else in my old neighborhood they slow down, but I just I just never stop. And then people are, like, oh, when you have kids, that's gonna be the one. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my kids are five and seven, two little girls. And the, and the one, the one, the pinball, she, she's like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, she could probably, she probably would want to, like, run out to my body and bounce mm -hmm. off me, and she'd be okay with it. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but I'm serious, too. Like, she could do that. And I just, I never kept, I just never lost that energy. Of course, you know, energy drinks and caffeine help, but mm -hmm. I also have this, this is going to be a very hot take. I hate sleeping. I hate it. I hate it. Hmm, I hate it. I like to sleep as less as possible so I could get the most done in a day. Like my girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend, she she loves to sleep. She loves it. I know. I love sleep. <laughs> I don't. I don't get enough of it, and I think that's what it is because mm -hmm. I have so much to do, and it's like I'm the kind of person that likes to stay busy. 
And it's just like, but I don't really get enough sleep. You have no idea. She enslaves me three days a week. And she's <laughs> always busy telling me what to do, telling me to make sure the guests are ready, asking if I'm okay, sharing conversations. She's so mean. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She feeds me gluten-free <laughs> No good. See, I'm, I put I'm him in a pro box gluten. with no holes. Yeah, that's right. In box with no holes. You don't even want me to breathe. She's like, you don't get an air hole till you do at least the, the chores checklist for the day. I'm like, okay, master, I'll get on that. Mm-hmm. But dude, <laughs> dude, that's crazy, man. Like you are literally living the like, what do you call it? like <laughs> the bachelor kind of lifestyle, but you're still being the family responsible dad. That, mm-hmm. That's that's commendable. Now, yeah, I'm Homer Simpson, man. I still much have like, fun while being dad. But the, you the know one, what? I need to I had, get to that. Go ahead, Steven. The, the one question I wanted to ask, though, have you tracked your locations from like when you started getting into pizza and where you've moved from and whether there was an actual uh, closure of that pizza shop after you left that area? And if you're the cause of the closures <laughs> for the amount of pizza you've eaten? I have definitely had companies tell me that they definitely did not get as much business when, when I would leave a certain <laughs> area. I've had them tell me that. And of course, if I'm in the area, I will always, I don't forget. I always say, Hey, I'm in the area. I got to give them my respects. And that was, and that wasn't exclusive to pizza, believe it or not. If I knew a, a killer hot dog joint, Chinese food joint, Thai, I always made really good with the locals. So mm-hmm. I was, and I was very vocal in the Chicago area for the food. It's like, I love talking about good food in general and being in the Chicago area. I mean, we're one of the fattest cities in the nation for a reason because the food is really good and we know how to stack our plates fill with them. We know how to stack them. So I'm I'm Mm. like, that's like the one of the few things that keeps me in Illinois. Like as soon as my kids are 18, I've already told my girlfriend, I want Illinois, but I already know I'm going to cry for like a whole year after that because of the lack of good food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I already know I'm going to miss it. So I'm, (laughs) I'm seeing my sorrows out now before that inevitable happens. That uh, that sounds that sounds like New Orleans. But to kind of like back up a little bit, it's just interesting with your YouTube journey, just how mm-hmm. similar you know it it is to others who've been on the show. Where it's like they started with like one or like two channels, like mm-hmm. either with, it was Ripper, if it was Nerdrotic, or if it was Geese and Gamers, it's like it started there and you just kind of like went down to like all these other channels and then mm-hmm. just started connecting with other people, you know, in in the community. So I love talking to people like, like yourself. It's like you've not only connected with other people within the community, but you also want to give back at the same, you know, Absolutely. at the same time. So mm. that's, that's like, that's, that's, um, God, I'm like tripping over words, but yeah, not only commendable, but it's, um, but it's also rare too, because you have some people out there who, you know, they want to get their name out there. And then you have the people who definitely want to help and bring each other up. So one of the things that I love about this community is that in a way you're expected you know, to like, to, you know, to, to give back. Mm -hmm. And one person who I like blatantly heard that from actually was from, uh, from Gary. Mm -hmm. Cause he was like, you know, I try to, you know, help as many people, you know, as possible and kind of like, you know, pay it, pay it forward. So that's always good to hear that, like constantly going on and around in the, in the community. So, Mm -hmm. so that's great. I, I think it's cool. You're on more yelling with parked cars. I'm, it's on too late for me, <laughs> <laughs> so I can never freaking catch it. <laughs> That's perfect. See, it's perfect for me because we're me and comics and culture. I think we're all in Central Time, uh, and okay. my kids okay. are asleep at that time, and I I can unleash my most vocal, <laughs> vulgar stuff. And we, of course, that's where I subtitle like mm-hmm. the alcohol intensity ramps up, and mm-hmm. we, that's good. It's just that's where that's that's a shining moment for me. That time, that time period yeah. of life. Yes. Well, yeah, I got it's a, great. I got to ask you about the Simpsons because I yes. don't think I think it's been. I don't think we've had any of you on here that could talk. Uh, love it. The Simpsons. Love it. You know, it's like I I dropped out of watching it um, oh, as within should. the past couple um couple of years because it's mm-hmm. it just. It's we not, know where it went. Yeah, we know where it like went, mm-hmm. you know, off the rails. Like the most prized thing that I have is the Simpsons, but it's the Simpsons 20th anniversary um 
collection where they're all on all on DVD. Like I bought it. The oh, one with, you nice. know, the I know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. That is like one oh. of my prized freaking like possessions. I'm envious, actually. And um <laughs> what? I'm envious, actually. Not really? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. You gotta understand. That was kind of one of the things that brought me and my girlfriend together was the Simpsons. Like she's a diehard fan too. And like, mm -hmm. we've been on a hunt since we moved in together. We're like kind of digging for all the cool figures that are really expensive and just trying to get like, we got, we ordered, we got a cool mint condition in the box. Hank Scorpio. I, I was obsessed with the hit and run video game on the PlayStation two days. That was religion <laughs> for me, that game, that game. Oh my gosh. That game. I must have played that so many times. Friends would come over, family would come over. It's like, let's play the Simpsons game. Let's play mm -hmm. the Simpsons game. I can't find, but I don't know where the heck it is. But um, when I would go to Universal Studios, actually oh, in Orlando. Yes, yes. With the whole Simpsons section that they, mm -hmm. they have there, that's just freaking amazing. I love it. It's like you walk into they have like the Quickie Mart that has all this stuff there. Like in um in the, in the Quickie Mart, and they even have the taco truck run by the Bumblebee guy. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank time. you. Come again. And they have um, what is it? Oh, like oh. all the fast food eating places, like Cletus's Chicken Shack. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Krusty Burger. They cr yeah, Krusty Burger's there too. Krusty Burger. Um, the fisherman. I'm blanking on his on uh, on his day, but they have like his fried fish shop and everything, yeah, I know and even those taverns and get like the flame and mo and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I just love being, you know, immersed oh, into the man. Simpsons and just how long. But before it went off the rails, mm -hmm. how long that show went, and not only how long it went, but just like all the personalities in um in the town. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell me besides Homer Simpson. Like, what are, or like, a who, and, and I'll give you three, because you can't pin it down to just one. Like, your three favorite characters oh. in, in the Simpsons verse. You know, I'm not one to advocate for neglect, but this definitely is going to feel like one of those cases of <laughs> neglect. Because uh, even if I choose three, which I have three, I could name right off the top of my head, and I'm going to name them. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm neglecting so many more, because even the one-off characters were amazing. That's how amazing a show that is, where characters who were in there for one episode stood out. You had your mm -hmm. Hank Scorpios, you had your um, Mr. Um, um, what's Frank Grimes as well. Like these are memorable characters, and they just had one episode to leave an impression, mm -hmm. and that says a lot about a show where that character leaves that lasting impression. But as far as like, I'm gonna go with repeating characters as far okay. as top three. I'm okay. gonna go with Mo Apu. And um, God, this oh, my my brain blanked out. I'll probably just go with comic book guy for obvious reasons. <laughs> I'll go with comic book guy. Thank but you. Yes, <laughs> worst show ever. <laughs> oh no! Thank you. Come again. <laughs> oh, we just got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know those sets, Lorena, where they have? Did you ever get those Simpson sets where they came like a like a with like a a room or environment from the Simpson show, and it came with a figure? You put it on the set, and they and it says quotes from the show. Diorama. I don't think I had that. Oh, no, I didn't. God, I didn't, get, I didn't get the pictures. Oh Lord, I don't need more stuff in my house. Yeah, you but do. I'll probably go find it. I, I <laughs> say do. that, and then every time I go to Universal and I go in the Simpson section, I'm like mm -hmm. freaking grabbing stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, those are the characters. Like, Moe's a huge one for me because back when I was living directly in Chicago, I had my Ooh. buddies who I met in the metal community, and two of them were big Simpsons fans. So, like, we were already enjoying metal and alcohol. So then you, when you had the Simpsons lair, we were a trifecta of greatness. Before you know uh -huh. we had these three dudes who would just party all night, they'll throw beer cans at the wall, and then mellow out watching The Simpsons at 7 a.m. the next morning. Because that's what we would go hard. We'd party into the next day or the next afternoon. So mm -hmm. it would be a, a like 12 to 18 hours straight of party. And then Simpsons would be uh, like our mellow out together. And one time we set up a thing where we would, well, listen to metal and uh -huh. drink. And we're like, we're going to do a moathon. A moathon. So we watched the most centric episodes. <laughs> So we had to definitely do less drinking in order to do that to surviving, which we end up drinking during the moathon. We made it, but boy, were we getting, <laughs> is it getting tough during the end? 
I just, I, Mo is just one of those characters and just with the whole thing of him always answering the phone mm-hmm. and he never oh. figures out he's freaking getting pranked every time. I'm, every I'm looking for it. I have, I have a huge ass and my breath smells. And I, I'm <laughs> like huge. And now all of a I love the episode where the prank call backfires. I'm huge, you know. And then and, and then Bart's like, oh, I'm sorry. This is a prank call that totally backfired. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. And that's the thing. That show had these really simple moments, but mm-hmm. they were very effective. Because I always tell people, it's not about simple. Because some people will say, oh, this is so simple. I'm like, it doesn't matter if it's simple. It matters on the execution. As long as the execution is good, mm-hmm. and that is what makes it stick out. Like we all, I mean, Lorraine, I know you know this joke. Hello, my name is Mr. Burns. I believe you have a letter for me. Okay, Mr. Burns, what's your first name? I, I don't... don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. It it's is... so simple. And it's effective. It's effective. Extremely effective. Mm-hmm. And even just like running, even running gags, like my like my one of my favorite ones is like the itchy and scratchy show. Right, I have an which awesome is scratchy shirt. Which is freaking like violent as heck. All mm-hmm. right, in the one episode, I think where Bart and Lisa was was a, uh, oh gosh, I think I, I don't think Barney was babysitting. I don't know if he was, but they were like at the house and they're watching and they're just like. This is the most violent, itchy, and scratchy episode. And they're watching it. And they're watching it. And he trips over the TV and the plug pulls out of the wall. And they're screaming. And he's oh, like, do yeah. what? Plug it in. Plug it in. What? The TV. The TV. <laughs> freaking out. And you already know you're missing it. And they plug it back in. And Krusty's like, well, we'll never show that again. Yeah, that I know what you're talking about. I remember that. I freaked out when I saw it. But what's going to happen? The itchy and scratchy. I was freaking out. Ten-year-old man is freaking out. Freaking out. I want to know, too. And it was, and, it, and the brilliance of that is, we all knew what they were going to be missing oh, yeah. with that. <laughs> oh yeah, later on I figured it out, but at the time I was a little kid pre puberty. Yeah, I'm like, pre- what are they doing? What's happening, guys? But now I'm looking back and like, bro, hilarious. It's it's just like they're they're writing because I heard they would like they would burn their writers out. Because they just the just the writing was just so you know on on point mm-hmm. and everything within just like every you know every episode even from like Ned the nosy neighbor you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> even even with him but it's just like they it's like they forgot they forgot that or willingly forgot that which is why it's just like the Simpsons is just you know. It's just like gone downhill, which is a shame mm. because that show, if any show had sharp writing, it was it was The Simpsons. Yep. Like if you sat down to watch an episode, you pretty much knew what you were gonna get, that you were in for a good, edgy, you know, time with simple, you know, with simple humor, because you have the simple jokes like you know, yeah. we're saying dough and everything like that. <laughs> and and even the episode where they met his mom, yeah. and Lisa, Lisa's like. You didn't dumb the words down. She's like, how could you possibly, you know, <laughs> Homer's dad, I think she turned to leave and she hit her head on something. Yeah. Goes, <laughs> I, mean, I, <laughs> I was dying. I was crying. I, I, I had tears. My face hurt seeing that. I remember that like it was yesterday. God, you're bringing back some amazing memories of those first time. And that's amazing because like even with those first time watches the rewatchability is sky high like yeah it's insane my girlfriend and i we continue going back like of course we have our endless well of movies and shows we still like to seek out but there's mm-hmm. something that that continues to bring us like you know what let's not watch them where we're required to think let's watch the citizens again <laughs> so yeah and it's just it's all those episodes especially one through nine in particular they're like, they're, there's just incredible episode after incredible episode. And just, and it's crazy because, like, you would have like episodes that are insanely over the top. And then you would have that. And then you would have episodes that are very totally different where they have a very emotionally driven family episode, too. And mm-hmm. then you have the episodes where it was about a supporting cast member, whether it was like your Ned Flanders, 
mm-hmm. or even Barney too. We've had yeah. seen Barney go through his moments too. And that's, that says a lot about a show to be able to do that and pull it off the way they did. And fun. Somehow they finally, they, Homer's one of those guys where if he was real, I would be jealous of him in real life. Because if you imagine if you're a boss and you're reading through Homer's resume, astronaut, boxer, <laughs> go, like you've done everything there is to do, Homer. You have lived the best life ever. He fought George Bush too <laughs> in the sewer. Like he's just, he's doing all these things. I'm like, man, that would be so cool if I got to live that life. Like Homer's yeah. been everything. <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Like, God, I, that, that was real life. Like reading that resume, would you take that resume? Like, <laughs> how would you? How would you respond to that resume? Like, wow, you do everything. Oh my god! Yeah, mm-hmm. that is. That you is... guys are forgetting one character, though. What? Let me forget it. The carbon rod. What the hell, man? Like the carbon rod had so much pinnacle point. Rod and Todd. No, the carbon <laughs> rod from the astronaut episode that was oh, brought oh. back numerous times. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah, anatomy yeah. carbon rod. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that and there's something else that you forgot. Who killed there's, Mr. There's Burns? No, no. Sideshow Bob. Oh, oh Sideshow right. Bob. Oh, he had memorable <laughs> episodes. I feel like every episode he was getting a little bit closer to getting to Bart. Every see, episode was like <gasps> the Bob. one where they hit at the air show inside the helium, the, the hydrogen uh blimp. <laughs> And his voice kept changing as he was going. <laughs> yep, I remember that. Oh my god! See, you're taking me back once again. Too, it, it's funny because even when you like, yeah, you see all these episodes. There's ones you still forget about, and then when someone brings Never, mm-hmm. that was glorious, glorious. God, and and that show it, it blows my mind to this day, and it it makes it that much more heartbreaking because The Simpsons, like your Doctor Who's and Star Wars of the World, they yeah. They they took a dive too. They really they took a real dive. And like I stuck around after I know some people who kind of dipped out after nine or ten. I mm-hmm. stuck around for fourteen or fifteen because there's still a few good moments. Like one that stood out to me was when Stan Lee was on and he had the whole Homer Hulk episode. Oh. That was hilarious. <laughs> and another fa- fa- funny one. And this is when probably towards the end, like for me of watching occasionally, they had Judas Priest on an episode. And then their singer, Rob Halford, went on the mic and he started doing singing. But except mm-hmm. the thing is, he wasn't doing the singing. He actually does in Judas Priest. He is more of like a ah! type of voice, high octaves. But instead, uh-huh. they gave him that Cookie Monster grunt death metal style. And a lot of people freaked out. And being a metalhead, I get it. I was just uh-huh. like, Judas Priest is not a death metal band. And then the very next episode, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the whole, like, I wouldn't say controversy, but Someone in that studio knew that people were responding to that. So mm-hmm. Bart was writing on the chalkboard the next week, Jewish Priest is not a death metal band. Jewish Priest is not a death metal band. Yeah. You know what? And it's funny that you bring that up. That was, I was always fascinated that every episode they had something new that Bart was writing mm-hmm. on the board. Yep. And something that happened with the couch scene at the end. Yo, I loved it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it seemed like every week. It was just, I'm like, how the heck do they freaking come up with these? Yeah. Between that and the Halloween specials, too. I mean, it's like... Treehouse of Horror. Yeah. Treehouse. Oh, man. <laughs> I am Kang, and this is Co- my sister, Kodos. Hello. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was <laughs> so good. I will I will not forget the one where um, they became Bob Dole, Bill Clinton, and they were holding hands. And then, like, people were like, "Why are the, why is the president uh, and the one who's running against him holding hands?" And they and also they did infamous speech. It doesn't matter who you vote for. Either way, your planet is doomed. Doomed. <laughs> it is just such a shame when we remember, you know, all this great stuff about the Simpsons and all mm-hmm. the great writing and just. You know, just like with Star Wars, like with Doctor Who, with like Star Trek, it's like it's just they they've forgotten that. It's like they've forgotten how to truly, you know, how to truly entertain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's it's just heartbreaking. It's like you think, are they are they ever, you know, are they ever going to learn how to how to do that again? Not the same people involved. I mean, I mean, The Simpsons, like like every other fandom, it's just. It's going to have to take different people to get involved because the the current people who are involved, 
they're set on their idea and they're going to, I, I hate saying this, but they are willing to risk running that property into the ground. If it means getting their message out, which for them, it's not a risk. It's one of those things mm -hmm. where they'll go down trying if they have to, if, if it means that they succeed with their message worth mm -hmm. it for them, if it means the property going down in flames, because once again, they're not the ones with the attachment. They're not the ones that we are. We're not them. Sure. And because mm -hmm. they don't share that excitement and that passion that we do, mm -hmm. they'll never get it. They'll never get it. And how you, how you invade that, I mean, someone's got to pull a James Bond secret agent and go in there as like pretending to be one of them. Like mm -hmm. it would be kind of like if you were working for, like if you want to go in disguising like yourself, say, okay, I'm not Hydra, but I'm going to disguise like myself just so I can learn how the system works and dismantle it from top to bottom. That's what the only outcome I can see possible. Someone's got to disguise himself as, and that's going to, they're going to need a really good mold because people like that who are involved in those types of fandoms mm -hmm. who have taken over with their, their message, they're very good at playing the game. So you can't just be one or two steps ahead. You got to be like 30 because if you're only one or two, they're going to catch up quick. You need to be 30. You need to be 30 because, like I said, they, they, they've invaded every aspect of fandom possible. That I, I mean, I can't yeah. think of one where they haven't. If they haven't, it's probably, unfortunately, only a matter of time before they do. So, mm -hmm. and on top of it, we're going to, I've told our people this, and luckily we got creators, obviously, at least on a comic book medium, we have alternative media coming out and we're going to, we, I hate saying this, but I, I feel like an, an alternative Hollywood might be what's necessary too, because they're going to say is, Oh, crud. They're not sick around for our message. Cause they, they see, they see us as we need them for an outlet, but we're willing to mm -hmm. suffer that message, but they don't care. Cause they like, Oh, well you, where else do you have to go? Where else do you have to go? We need to be able to have a spot where we can go to. And then they're like, no, don't come back. Come on. No, no. You're supposed to listen to our message. No. Right. See ya. Bye. We're going over here. You guys are crashed that thing and burned to the ground, but we're going to go over here. <laughs> we're going to make something that people can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I don't like that, but I feel like the more I, the more time goes on, it feels like it's got to come to that point. How and how long it'll take is, oh boy, that's anyone's guess. <laughs> that's anyone's uh, educated I, guess. I so feel that that's, that that's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. Hollywood needs to realize that we have alternatives mm -hmm. and we're not, we're not coming back mm -hmm. until you fix stuff. Mm -hmm. And right now they're just, they're not interested in it. But yeah, you're right. It's like, they think we have nowhere else to go, mm -hmm. nowhere else to look. And it's like, you just have to sit back, you know, and just take whatever we give you. So, yeah. <sighs> oh, I know. It, and, and, and that's the thing we got. And that's the thing. Like, I still look back and think to myself, I don't need them. Like, I have one. I have also those Simpsons episodes to go back to. But I have my collections of albums, my collection of movies and mm -hmm. all these things. And of course, we all have had that show or three or movie or three. We initially want to check out. But life just kind of happened. We just never got around to it. Yeah. We have a century's worth of mediums to check out. Mm -hmm. This is the time in life to check that out. If, and, and this is a, in a way it's a golden age of sorts to dig through those things. And, and what's cool is it's making physical media kind of in again, because we're going forwards by going backwards again. And uh -huh. That's kind yeah. of fun for me because I never stopped being physical. <laughs> so it's just like, I, well, you all were all calling, calling it us style. I stayed here mm -hmm. in my little corner, still buying these things anyway. So I, I was used covered. to think that I was crazy because around, um, I want to say like around black Friday, or whatever when mm -hmm. amazon would start having sales on you know blu-rays and all mm -hmm. this stuff i'm like yeah okay i'll throw that in the bucket i'll throw it out here i'll throw that there so i have this accumulation of dvds mm -hmm. that haven't been unwrapped like i bought like seasons of sesame street that were pre-elmo thank god i bought, like the wait, 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 wait. wait <laughs> was that pre-tickle me elmo or yes. just just pre Elmo because you know pre, pre Tickle Elmo. Me Elmo was pretty 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 no cool. Elmo at all because I can't freaking hear stand his ass but this was like <laughs> <laughs> he was up this like God I just want to freaking punch him like born in a dinosaur but anyway but yeah like old school like old school um Sesame Street I had like 
classic movies that I bought. I had like some Quentin Tarantino movies that I wanted to get at the same time. I even got, and I'm so glad I did this, The Muppet Show on DVD. Oh, Seasons one through three. Yeah. And I was watching, I started watching season one last night. I'm like, I'm sitting there laughing like crazy. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I remember when this stuff was fun. And, you know, and the, and the, and the writing was great. And I'm just like, I don't have to see any disclaimer about these are outdated. Well, yeah, we you know that. <laughs> right? No, it's, it's, and that's why story? I stress to, to many, like, buy oh, the physical. No, 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 Cause if they, oh God. No, this thing, uh, this thing, I swear it was like Annabelle. <laughs> I wanted to just know. That thing was like freaking Annabelle. I just, oh God, mm -mm, no. <laughs> Can you imagine scary. hearing that and chasing you around the house? Yeah, I would, I I've, have we've had some Tickle Me Elmos around uh, my, my places of living. And I, I personally, I, I don't care because, you know, I, I mean, and here's why I don't care. Like, I can get why it's annoying for some, but for me, like, I get the same gifts now at 33 going on 34 that I got when I was 12. So I get, I never forgot where I came from, from that mentality where we were, as kids, we were used to having our toys be the noisiest possible. And I know it's a lot of adults they forget that they forget where they come from because they're like, Oh man, I can't stand all this noise. It's just like when I hear my kids going off the toys, I, I, I just, I remember when I was that. So it just, it was, I guess I just am lucky to have really good memory because I remember being the kid with all that racket. Now it's just, it's just passed down. And for me, it's just, I don't really bat an eye towards, I mean, if I, if it gets to a point where it's like getting in the way of like a phone call or something or some important, I'll, I'll say something. But other than that, I just I don't really bat an eye towards it. I just didn't like Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> I was always more of a cookie monster type of guy. So Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah. I had the cookie monster toy. Yeah. But cookie yeah. monster's my guy. I have cookie monster pajamas that I wear and they're the greatest okay. thing. I've been on I've actually been on yelling at parked cars and there'll be people who are riding the cars like, is Nick wearing cookie monster pajamas? <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm drinking whiskey and in my cookie monster pajamas. No joke. The day that I found out that Cookie Monster had a Twitter feed, I subscribed to that. Oh, same here. Same here. You're <laughs> to the choir of that. I was just like, Cookie Monster has a Twitter? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll be right over there. <laughs> so it's crazy how many freaking Sesame Street characters on Twitter. Have. Oh, I know, right? I, I, I looked into it. Oh my god, this is crazy. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Stephen, you have a question? I don't want to. A question? Like, no, I've been having fun. Like it's hard <laughs> to get in between Nick's talking because when he gets going, and I, I'm ADHD, I'll tell you that right now. Even my brain's like. Uh, you can take a break. I'm like, all right, all right, I'm out. I'm, out. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to enjoy the commentary. I'm going to slip in a joke once in a while and, you know, uh, grip some air because it's all around me and it's free for the taking. I just uh, know that freaking Tickle Me Elmo had me screaming. Yeah, dude. My, my brother had one. <laughs> oh, sorry for the folks who have uh, that uh, uh, Everyone who's having a seizure, we take no affiliation with a health practitioner. Oh, freaking stream yards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, folks, I wanted to bring up um, Nick Weiser's uh, YouTube here. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. She's 276. I just subscribed. So you're 276 Thank you. now. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. So you have to go and subscribe to him uh, on yeah, YouTube. You know. Also, mm -hmm. also follow him over here <laughs> I'm kidding. on Twitter. So, Nick, what do you have coming up that you'd like to let folks know about? Um, let's see here. Of course, I got yelling at park cars and I got X Flix and chill with Latino slant. I do Sundays. I do, um, howling about entertainment with Jake D. And as far as my own, um, like channel with my own, just regular content, I do 32 flavors of entertainment Tuesday nights. I do Friday night comic talk, which of course, Fat Steve was on yesterday. Yesterday we took a detour from comics because of, <laughs> because this week was basically like a year of our lives this week. So it was like, all right, guys, we're going to take a break just so we can have some laughs again. Because this week was, as I've told many people, this, this week felt like a year long. So yeah. I wanted to just, I want to bring some laughs again to everyone. Mm -hmm. So and I, yeah. I feel like we succeeded on that. So we'll be back on our normal broadcast. And of course, I've got a few pizza joints I'm going to be hitting up in the city within the mm -hmm. next month. I'm going to be doing videos on, and I've been working on a, a documentary of 
albums to um change your pants to uh, <laughs> and this is um yeah this is one band i've been obsessed with um based out of seattle they're called black breath i'm like, i'm halfway through with the doc this mini piece i'm doing their album sense to life that i listen to basically religiously and i and they've kind of been inactive for half a decade so hopefully they see this my video one day and like wow this guy he really loved their album. Maybe we should get back together. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm one thing. I'm still, I'm just the kid who happens to love the band. Like if we were in the age pre email, I would probably write a letter to him like, I love you guys so much. You should thank me your album credits. Ha. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm, I'm, and of course I'm going to be doing my absolute best to just continue to get my name out there. Like, I, I've been told that for some people that they need to have a cigarette because like my energy somehow gives out to him where they feel like they need to take a break <laughs> from watching like my content because like he just goes, 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 he goes uh -huh. and and I get that. So and that's fine because I'm not looking to be the most giantest channel on the planet. What I want long term, mm -hmm. I want to have a loyal following. And it doesn't mean loyal by way of watching every video. It's if you like the pizza or food stuff you have that for there if you want something to rant about cool right there along with pop culture or the music stuff if you happen to just like all of it as well great if you like the live stuff mm -hmm. like and then once again that's what the 32 because different variations different right. players so there is meaning to the name too besides mm -hmm. the simple baskin robbins one up like <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm just gonna continue to spread my my name i want to get around and give myself to the world and See who accepts me and whoever doesn't, it's fine. Because whoever likes me will like me. And I want to, I look at Comics Division. And, like, it's funny because if you look at his page, he's probably around, like, 6K subs. Mm -hmm. But when he does his live streams, people show. And there are people who uh, who are YouTubers who have 10,000, 15,000 more. And they don't draw anywhere near what he does on live stream. And I feel like what he has is loyalty. And that's what I see all when I got into metal. I saw these bands who are not the hugest bands. But they had a loyal following. I want mm -hmm. that loyal following. As long as I have that loyal following, whether it's in one form or all of them, I want the loyalty. As long as I got the loyalty, I'm good. And that's smart because you want to, it's not about the number of subscribers mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that you have. It's about producing the content that you want to do. Like I tell people, produce the content that you actually want to pull up on screen, mm -hmm. you know and watch because if you don't want to watch your own stuff why the heck should anybody else yep so focus Agreed. on you know don't don't be so apt to follow like what other people are doing they're coming up with this video that video this video it's like focus on what you want you know what you mm -hmm. want to put out there and the people will follow you mm -hmm. oh yeah people yeah. will show up you know, oh yeah, don't, and don't some you need extra. Food. Some you need extra convincing, and that's fine, man. Like I'm not if I don't get because there are some people who've seen me for a handful of weeks, whether it was on clobbering times mm -hmm. or yelling at park cars, and then they sub to me, and that's fine. Like I'm not if I need to put in the extra work, I, I'll I'll win you over the way I do. If you because I know I know there's a lot of us out there. I'm not gonna pretend there's not a lot of us out there, and people don't mm -hmm. like having their feeds overwhelmed. I get it. That's fine. I have one way or another, I'll win you over in some way, whether it's exactly. through pizza or whether it's through music or whether it's through <laughs> ranting. You're or like it's the back of his me. car in the trunk with some duct tape and rope. <laughs> one way or another, I'm gonna win you over. That's all that matters. <laughs> you don't have to agree to it. Just smile and nod, and it'll all be over. <laughs> but dude, I I absolutely, absolutely love love your energy love what you're working on love Thank what you. you're doing love that you are a simpsons fan because dude we are gonna have to stream about the simpsons please please i'll show you my my insanely killer collection of figures i have too like you took it out of the box like, yes i you did <laughs> some, there's some i didn't the homer astronaut episode i kept them in the box it lists the fun facts on the oh, back it lists yeah. trivia question it even lists the original air date with the name of the episode on the box so that Did one it come I kept with in the, the carbon rod though the spaceman homer oh god i gotta look at it again all right i've i've my my brain's like when charlie sheen was by winning i i just got these million things going on sometimes uh, like i refresh myself on certain things so it's just like <laughs> duh 
Winning. Oh, hold up. There's that. I need that. I need that. I need that. You win there. You win there. Oh, there's that sense of emotion. Now I remember. Yeah, my brain's just like this. I'm a constant star. I, I love it. I love it. Thank it's you. awesome. So, Nick Weiser, thank you so much for being on the show mm -hmm. with us. Yeah, we we definitely, we, we got, like I said, we got to get you back because we got to talk Simpsons. We got, okay? we'll, <laughs> talk, we'll talk about, hey, thank you for having me on. And Stephen, thank you for sending the invite. This is, this is magnificent. We just, it just feels like a cool, like, like setting, just having the three of us talk, like, almost like we already knew each other, but oh, we that's because really, we haven't. That's because we haven't shook you down yet. Usually, when we're done recording, we oh. turn, we turn, we put out the PayPal. Oh, <laughs> shake, shake <it> <laughs> was that joke good? I got to remember to write that one down. Yeah. So I don't forget. <laughs> Folks, thank you so You're much welcome. for hanging out with us. Thanks so much, Nick Weiser, for joining us. Please do subscribe to Nick Weiser mm -hmm. over on YouTube. Subscribe to Fat Steven. Subscribe mm -hmm. to myself. Everyone take care, and we will see you next episode. Bye. <laughs> but, but seriously, do, do, you, do we shake them down now, or do we wait till the outro is done? Because uh, I got the PayPal link right Maybe 50 bucks.